Take four, go. Hi, I haven't shot a YouTube video in a very long time. I think nearly about two months and for some reason epidemic sounds still charges me. Uh, but when I use the music without paying for a month, I'm pretty sure that they will flag this video and I'll get in lots of troubles, but that's how the system works. Uh, how have you been? Uh, I haven't shot a video in a while because I have one, I've been traveling and then I got knocked down by malaria. I must have told you that guys, I, I don't think I did because everything has been happening so so really quick. Uh, so I haven't been able to really sit down and uh, work on any content for YouTube. Uh, and also now I am constructing, uh, I'm doing a re makeover of the studio or a makeover of the studio. That's why I've got some plywood here on the side. Uh, it's actually a bit messy uh, when you look at it now, but hey, I thought I would shoot something out. Uh, I think today's video is about one of the reasons why I think that I haven't shot, uh, besides the fact that I've been really, really busy and uh, not having a lot of time to shoot. I think I have been doing a lot of contemplating on on what direction to go to shooting YouTube or creating content for YouTube in that case. One thing that, I, that I've realized is that we, we do become the things that we covered a lot, uh, or the people that we love so much, and which is good at one point, but then at a, a certain point we lose who we are as creators or as storytellers. Uh, because if you, if you go in the direction of one person uh, and, and copy everything that they do meticulously, you'll become an, a shadow of who they are and you will always walk within their shadows. And even if you try to break away, it will, sometimes it's usually too, too hard to break away from being someone's shadow. Uh, we follow lots of YouTubers and in that sense, they influence on, on what the culture is, especially for YouTube. Uh, for example, travel vlogging, uh, talking about gear, creating content, which would be probably in terms of storytelling or telling a story, uh, which is not about gear or which is not about travel. Maybe short films or maybe just regular vlogs. And uh, there is lots of uh, all very, very small YouTubers that we we all love, uh, probably the likes of uh, uh, Peter McKinnon, of course, the first one. You have uh, Matt Devilia, who does uh, minimalism, and then you have Case Neistat, who's like the king of blog. But every time we look at them and and we want to create content like them, uh, and, and sometimes we forget where we are and the region where we live and what content do people appeal to. I mean, right now, uh, this thing being like a global village, the entire world is all interconnected. Uh, it's interconnected through, of course, uh, social media is interconnected through the power of, uh, of the internet. So when we look at the things that happen in the US or Canada or the UK and the things that happen in, in Uganda or Kenya, or Rwanda, they, they're quite, quite contrasted. Uh, and they're quite very, very different. But what we usually find ourselves doing, especially content creators in, in from Uganda, we always want to create content that looks uh, like the people that we follow. Because when we think, yes, that's, that's the way that content should be created, it looks visually incredible. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a, uh, it's, it, it's the latest trend, uh, that the editing style is, is incredible and things like that. The color grading especially, uh, we copy lots of color grading. And then, um, and then that influences how we tell our stories here. And even if our stories are quite different from, from the stories from the other part of the, of, of the continent or the other part of the world, we always want to merge them together. But I think then that loses a grip on, on what type of stories on, and how to tell the stories from our perspective and from our people and, and how our people 
perceive that. It's really, really hard uh, because when you're starting out, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to create sometimes. And through copying other creators, if you're an artist, you always love, uh, let's say, a, a, a certain artist and, and you copy their style of art. And then as you're growing as an artist, then you break off from that style of art. And what we've been able to do here, I think, especially for me, I would say that I've kind of always been on a, on a plateau. Uh, so as, as an artist, you, you go like this and then you plateau, and then you need something else to help you go up. Uh, and I've always plateaued uh, because I did this and then, and then plateaued because then I've been thinking to myself, how should I create content that is that one looks visually good and also uh, from telling from my part of the world. When I first got the 1DX Mark II, I was at, a, at an artist conference, not, not a conference, but an artist exhibition. Uh, uh, they were exhibiting some art. You had 3D, game, 3D artists and then you had gamers. So it was so, sort of like a convention and this was somewhere maybe in 20, 2017. And I remember one of the guys approached me because he saw me holding a 1DX Mark II and he said, wow, you're like Peter McKinnon. And I'd, nev I'd never followed Peter McKinnon at the, at the point. And I said, who is Peter McKinnon? He said he's, a, he's one of the best YouTubers. I didn't know who he was, so I went back to find out. And, and he was like the god of the 1DX. He was the god of the 1DX Mark II. He, he tore it apart and he created lots of incredible things. I think he sort of changed the scale on how, on, on how to create content, uh, which was very, very different from, um, from a content that Kess and I had created. And he, he also positioned himself in his own league. Uh, and, and, and I think that's the point, is that you have to understand where you are as a creator and position yourself, use the tools that you have to position yourself where you want to be. Um, and, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to follow the other artists. You, you still follow the other artists because you still copy things from them that you're going to integrate in your art. But, but again, you also have to find your voice, which is really, really, really hard thing. And when we see the other artists do it, for, uh, for example, the, the, the artists that we're talking about, it, it seems really, really simple because they're in their elements. So it is simple for them because they've understood how to do it. So their element is, is, is quite simple, but breaking off that element for you to become a different type of person and creating a content that reflects who you are is the most difficult thing. That's why if uh, uh, we usually joke with, uh, with my friend Paul Zana and talking about how well, you meet a client and then they tell you, hey, we want a simple logo. And then they forget that it's really, really easy to do a very complicated, ugly logo than it is to do a, a minimalistic, simple logo that reflects who the client is and who they are and, 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 and getting all their dreams and aspirations and, and, and the future of their brand into, into something very, very small. So that's the hardest thing to do. To keep it simple is the hardest. To make things really, really uh, oversaturated everywhere, uh, so much elements, that's really, really easy. But trying to control the chaos and the mess of who you are internally as an artist and then bring that all together into, into one simple style. It's the hardest thing. So I, I have decided to sort of cleanse myself and go back to the roots and say, hey, who do I want to be as an artist? And this has meant uh, me unfollowing, well, unsubscribing to all the, the incredible artists that I love and I followed and I've, I've decided to unfollow them all such that I sort of still come back to who I am and the stories that I want to create. Because I think I've got to a point where I shouldn't be influenced by other people. Yes, there is, a, there is certain elements that you still copy, but how do I copy those elements and still integrate them in my style of, of storytelling? And I think that's one of the hardest things and I think that's something that 
I am learning to do. So it's been it's, it's been it's sort of a roller coaster, and I don't want this video to to go like uh, ten minutes of me just self-loathing and. And, and, and then the viewers thinking to themselves, what the fuck is he talking about? Because when it goes too much, you lose point of what you're talking about. I think I am trying to, to relearn who I am as a creator, and this, that's what I wanted to do this year. And my, my, my idea for this year was to not have many clients such that I can, I am my own client, such that I become my client and I serve myself the way I would love to give to someone that has paid me to do it. I've gone back into my element to try and look at who I am and what, what do I want to create and how do I want to create it. Uh, and maybe after, after maybe a couple of months later, I would go because I know I'd miss uh, seeing what's going on on the other side of the world and, and uh, listening to their stories and how they say it. So I'll, I'll probably go back and, and, and subscribe and, 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 and follow back to those guys. But I think mainly right now what I want to do is I want to concentrate on, on the African element of art and storytelling and, and, and trying to find out what Africans are doing incredible things. And maybe they live in, in, on the other part of the world or maybe they live here. But I think going back to the roots and saying, hey, uh, how can we tell this? And, and maybe collaborating with lots of other different artists and things like that. So I don't know where this is going to lead. So I want to keep this uh, short. Let me know what you think about uh, cleansing and, and going back to the roots and, and doing things in a certain style. And if you're a travel vlogger, how do you tell uh, 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 Uganda in in a sense that when someone sees it they they understand and they say yes that's that's Uganda those are the colors that that's the green because the colors in Uganda are very very different from the colors in the UK or are very very different from the colors in the US and if, if someone looks at a video and, and says yes that video was shot in Uganda without even them going farther but from the first from the first frame and you say okay yeah this is Africa you understand oh this is East Africa or this is Kenya something like that so I think that's the that is somewhere that I want to try and go back to and see how that works out so yeah uh, I'm looking forward to to try and create more content uh, it's really really hard it's really really difficult especially in this time where I am like, oh, what can I create and how can I create it? There is lots. I have, I have, I have a shit ton of things to, to create. I have like over a hundred videos, but, but like I said, the hardest thing is trying to tell those videos in a very, very simple way that reflects where you are, where you're coming from and who you are as a creator. Uh, so I will see what happens in the next few days, few weeks, few months, few years. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Or uh, maybe you can also hit the notification button such that you understand every time that I post a video. Yeah, go ahead and like it, share it with someone that you think that will be of useful to. And I'll see you next time. Peace, bye.